Hey guys, um, Mike here. Had a long day. Uh, you know, every day is a stressful day when you work in cybersecurity. So, but it was a good day. It was productive. Um, another back to basics video. This video is going to cover mostly. Um, I was going to explain what a virtual IP is and how to use it, and then I'm going to run through a very quick non-functional demo. Um, I don't have a device behind my my lab unit FortiGate right now, so um, I won't be able to show you where the traffic's actually hitting and things like that. But I'll show you how to configure a virtual IP once I explain it, as well as um, you know how you would build a policy to utilize it. So, first things first, what is a virtual IP? Um, virtual IP is basically a method of using what we call destination NAT to translate an external address to an internal device. Um, most people are familiar with NAT in the sense of when they're going out to the internet their internal address scheme converts many to one um, to whatever external IP address their device has um, destination NAT, that's called source NAT, you're NATing the source traffic as it goes out a destination NAT has more to do with NATing traffic that's coming in from a external address to an internal so, um, a prime example of that would be you have a range of IPs that are assigned to your cable modem or your, your the router that hands off your fiber or whatever connectivity you have, and they go to that device. And then whenever you create a virtual IP for whatever range you have, you can then send traffic to whatever internal device using that external IP. So, for instance, if you own 24.24.24.0/24, you're able to use all those IPs. You could make your FortiGate use dot one, meaning that all traffic that's natted going out for your web users, it uses dot one. Or if you do an IP pool that has multiple IPs in it, you could do dot one through dot five. Whatever, it just depends on how many users you have behind you and whether or not it's necessary. Um, with a virtual IP, you could take 24.24.24.10 or anything in that usable range that you have and do a one-to-one -one mapping saying if you're trying to get to let's say mike.fortinetguru.com resolved to 24.24.24.10 and it's going to a web server that's hosted behind my firewall I would create a virtual IP that says 24.24.24.10 you map that to whatever my internal space is, whatever that internal address to that web server is. Um, for the sake of demo, this will be 10.30.30.0 slash whatever we choose, right? So um, I'm going to run through real quick on how to configure this and uh, how to build the policy. Um, I'm going to work on getting my lab set up better so that I actually have devices behind the FortiGate so I can show you how to actually use it. It's especially going to come in handy whenever we start doing the more advanced troubleshooting videos. So, anyways. So this is my internal FortiGate, um, my lab unit. And basically, for the sake of this one, I have 10.100.100.20. We are going to just assume that this is a, an external IP address, meaning act like it's not a, a RFC 1918 space make sure it's not act like it's not a private routed address treat it like it's an actual public IP right um, and for the sake of our demo we're gonna say that 24.24.24.0 slash 24 is routed to this dot 20 here my internal space is 10.30.30.1 or dot o slash 24 so that whole subnet so our quote unquote mapping will do there so what you do is you go under policy and objects and the first thing you have to do is create your virtual IP. So you create new virtual IP and we're going to call this uh, my.fortinetguru.com because we're going to use the example of I have a web server that's hosting this subdomain. It's going to be tied to my WAN1 interface and for the sake of this we're going to say it's 24.24.24.10 and we're going to say that just to keep things simple that my internal space is 10.30.30.10. This is going to be a static NAT, meaning 
I have a whole bunch of IPs available to me. I don't have to worry about breaking up certain ports and sending them to certain inside addresses, which you can do. Let's say if my WAN 1 interface was .10 um, and I only wanted like RDP to be able to come through to the server from the outside, I could do port forwarding and just port forward the external port to the internal. Meanwhile, all the other ports would go straight to the firewall as if the firewall owned them. So this is my one-to-one -one NAT from our virtual IP. And click OK. So mike.fortinetguru.com. And that name is just specifically for my reference. We go to IPv4 policy, create new. And this is mike.fortinetguru.com presence. Incoming interface is going to be outside because I use zones. And as you can see, this is a zone named outside that has members WAN1 and WAN2. Um, if you don't know what zones are, I have a video said zones and how they help you save your sanity, uh, keep you from going insane basically. Uh, it can simplify policy for you. So check out that video, ask questions if you have them. And then my outgoing interface is going to be inside because this is outside traffic coming in. I want the world to be able to visit this website. Source, all. Um, for the sake of this demo, we're using all. But if this were a server that you guys use for um, very specific services, let's say you have a, a web server that's only accessible by your clients, you would tie this down based on their IP address or their geolocation or whatever. And then destination, I need to choose my virtual IP. And in service, this is going to be my quote unquote web server, so we'll just let web traffic come through. And then we click OK. I turned off NAT because it's not needed for inbound traffic. The VIP does every match, all the matching. And that's pretty much the gist of it. So, what this tells you is outside traffic coming in from the world that's trying to hit the web address that resolves to the 24.24.24.10 IP on my outside. Translate that using destination app and come into my 10.30.30.10 web server. And some people go, well, why don't you just hook your web server up to a router and just let it do, let it assume the actual external IP versus using internal? Well, now I have the ability to apply my security sensors. I want to protect my HTTP web server and I'm going to use certificate inspection. So you're able to add unified threat management to this and give you so much more security capability. So that is the short and sweet of it. We will get into more advanced videos that explain destination NAT or VIPs and things like that and how to use them on IPsec tunnels and things of that nature. But that's how you're that's the simple approach for providing external access to internal resources using a virtual IP. Um, if you have any questions, I'm sure I left something out or maybe I wasn't super clear on how or why certain things are done, please don't hesitate to ask them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to reply. Um, otherwise, you guys have a great night and let me know if you need anything. Bye.